In popular medias, orangutans are usually depicted as something smart or something wise, like Oranguru from Pokemon, Maurice from the Planet of the Apes trilogy, Raka from the new movie, even the sculptor from Sekiro. But the question is, is it the same for the real-life orangutan? Also, why are they orange? Why are they so fat? And what's with this large cheek? Have you ever thought of those things? So, let's talk about it. And let me brought up the question. What exactly is orangutan? Orangutan is a primate, of course. It's a great ape. In the genus Pongo. Orangutan came from Malayan language, both Indonesian and Malaysian. Orang means person or people. Hutan means forest. Meanwhile, Pongo is a general term used for the great apes in the 18th century. Currently, there are three recognized species. The Bornean orangutan, Pongo pygmaeus, the Sumatran orangutan, Pongo abeli, and the relatively recently described Tapanuli orangutan, Pongo tapanuliensis. Pongo pygmaeus can be found around Borneo, both Indonesia and Malaysia. Pongo abeli can be found on northern region of Sumatra. Meanwhile, Pongo tapanuliensis can only be found in Batang Toru, South Tapanuli. What might be their most recognizable character is their orange hair covering their body. These hairs will become darker as they age. So you might notice older individuals have chocolate colored hairs. Now, some of you might not realize, but this is very unique. Look at other great apes. Their hairs are black. Maybe gray, but mostly black. So, why are they orange? Well, I don't think we have a definitive answer for this, but there are some theories. First of all, it's actually for camouflage. While yes, we can clearly see them on trees as most of the time it's very easy to distinguish orange from green leaves, it isn't the case for many animals. Some animals are dichromatic meaning they only have two types of photoreceptors. And so, they cannot really distinguish reddish color from greenish color. Orangutans don't really have many predators. Their potential predators are tigers and probably clouded leopard, and to some extent, pythons for juveniles. Mammals in the Ordo Carnivora are mostly dichromatic, so being orange actually helps the orangutans camouflage themselves. Also, this helps other orangutans recognize them on trees, as the orangutans have trichromatic vision. There might be more reasons, such as energy efficiency benefit and others. But as I said, I don't think we have a definite answer. So let's move on. They have pale orange to dark gray skin. As with their hair, the skin usually grows darker as they grow old. Their skin is usually noticeable on their palms and face since those don't have hairs. Even so, males and old females can grow facial hairs, like a beard. This is also unique when you think about it, since chimps and gorillas don't grow beard. Orangutans are very arboreal, and so their structures are adapted for arboreal life. Their arms are very long. Four of their digits are also long. Meanwhile, their thumbs are short, basically made for grasping branches and swinging around. Because they are very arboreal, Unlike the gorillas and chimps, they are not knuckle walkers. Instead of using their knuckles for walking, they usually use the side of their hands or even their palms. Their feet can also be used to grasp. Their hip joints are flexible, so they could rotate their leg more freely. Oh, just in case you were wondering, yes, they have ears of course. Their outer ears are proportionally very small, so you probably couldn't see them in adults but still very noticeable in juveniles. Compared to the chimps and gorillas, their face is relatively flat. That's because, compared to those two, the orangutan's torus supraorbitalis is underdeveloped, also known as bro ridge. Now, let's talk about this thing. This thing is called cheek pad, also known as flange. This flange is composed of mostly fats and some other connective tissues, skin being the obvious, of course. These are not supported by bones. You can only see this flange on adult males, but not all males. 
Some males can basically choose to not have this flange. More on this later. Dominant males will also develop laryngeal throat pouch as they grow their flanges. If that term is too long, just call them neck flaps. The three species also have different external morphology of course. The Bornean orangutan is bulkier, while the other two are relatively slender. Bornean orangutan also have darker hairs. Sumatran orangutan has long and loose hair compared to the other two. Papanuli orangutan have smaller skull and flat flanges. Unlike other great apes, orangutans are more solitary. Many adults spend most of their life alone. They are still a social animal though, like, if they meet others, they will most likely socialize. Just like Raka in Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Whoa, hold it right there bro. That's a spoiler. Is it? The movie was released more than a week ago dude. Some haven't got a chance to watch it bro. Alright, alright, I'm sorry. Anyway, but, if two males with flange meet, they will most likely fight. Flange males are intolerant of each other. This is what I mean earlier when I said some males can choose to not have this. Having this flange indicates that you are the dominant male. Or you are competing to become the dominant male. Basically, having this flange is like queuing into rank match. While not having this is like playing in casual match. Because this flange signifies dominant male, females prefer males with flanges. So, what about the males that choose to not have this? Well, like I said, males are intolerant to others with flange. Meanwhile, males without flange will usually go unnoticed. These males will then be able to enter the dominant male territory and mate with a female, sometimes without consent. Well, maybe a lot of the time. But yeah, that's just how their life goes. In some cases, unflanged males can then develop their flange. Like when they decided to move away and live alone. Or when a dominant male died and they wanted to fill the dominant role. This change is irreversible though. Once they grow flange, they cannot go back. Oh by the way, dominant males will usually call females by emitting long vocalization. Basically shouting. Their neck flaps help them amplify their voice. Female gestate for around 9 months before giving birth to a child. Females will be able to reproduce again after 6 to 9 years. Mother will take care of their child for around 8 to 9 years. After that, the child will enter the sub-adult phase and leave their mother. Usually at around 14 to 15 years old, they will reach sexual maturity. Orangutans make nests. These nests are made from braiding branches into matrix on trees. Orangutans are mostly herbivores. Specifically, they mostly eat fruits. Even so, they can eat other things, like leaves and barks, but also observe to eat honey, eggs, insects, fish, and even meat. Very rarely though, especially the meat. So why are they so fat? Well, orangutans have the tendency to eat a lot. Most of the fat orangutan pictures you see on the internet are those that are being overfed in zoos. But why do they eat a lot though? You see, as I've said, they mostly eat fruits. Fruits are mostly seasonal. There are times when fruits aren't readily available in the wild. There are years when the fruit productions are low. And so, when a lot of ripe fruits are available, orangutan tends to eat a lot to prepare for when fruits are scarce. Like an animal preparing for hibernation. When fruits are scarce, that's also when they are observed eating other types of food. Some aren't so lucky to find a nutritious food, hence why the stored fat is important. Oh and, in case you are wondering, they don't like swimming. But still, they do have the capability of wading to some extent, usually because they have to, not because they like it. And I'm not sure in what section I should put this information. So I'll just put it here. Orangutans can produce two different vocal sounds at the same time. So it's basically like beatboxing. Like this. I'm sure it's quite obvious, but yes, orangutans are smart. They usually learn from their mother since they are young. They pass the mirror test, which means they got self-awareness. They can't even play video games. 
well, basic video games, that is. They are observed to be capable in linguistic displacement. That basically means communicating things that aren't present. Like something on a different location. Or more importantly, something on a different time. Like talking about something that can happen in the future. Or something that happened in the past. I swear to god if you put another spoiler. Dude, I'm not. Now you're the one who's spoiling. Sorry about that. Anyway, being able to talk about something not present is very important for learning and teaching others. Oh, and they are also known to be able to use varieties of tools, mostly stick though, to be used for extracting food. Some even observe using tools to catch fishes. You might even see the images of them sawing branches, or even this image of an orangutan spear fishing. They are doing these things because they just mimic human basically. It's not like they are successful in spearfishing, so they are not there yet, but definitely quite something. What's popular about them quite recently is them medicating themselves with plants in the wild. While yes, this publication is indeed new, published this month even, we actually knew that they do this since years ago. So how do they do that? First, they chew the leaf. Then they apply the chewed leaf mix with their saliva to their wound. The result is what you might have already seen in images. So, if you are wondering whether the orangutans are the smartest apes, we don't really have a definite answer. But in my personal opinion, remember, my personal opinion, teams are smarter in terms of working as a group and building legacy. Meanwhile, orangutans are smarter in terms of analyzing and figuring out stuff. You know, just like... <laughs> I'm joking. While currently all of them live on Sumatra and Borneo, they were once more widespread. Fossil of Pongo javensis was found from the late Pleistocene of Java. Pongo widen rehi was found from the late Pleistocene of China and Vietnam. So there were orangutans in China and mainland Southeast Asia, but they went extinct at the late Pleistocene. It's theorized that some might even survive into the Holocene in Vietnam and Cambodia. Also, while it's not exactly orangutan, the famous Gigantopithecus, or Gigantopithecus if you prefer to pronounce it that way, is also a close relative to the orangutan, but went extinct earlier at Middle Pleistocene of China. But what about the extant orangutan though? Will they also be extinct soon? Well, all I can say is, all of them are critically endangered. Their biggest threat is deforestations. Good news is, there are many organizations focused on the conservation of orangutan. And you might be able to read some news that said deforestation in Borneo and Sumatra have been declining since several years ago. While that is indeed correct, there is still a chance that deforestation will increase again in the future, especially in Borneo, since Indonesia planned to move the capital city to Borneo. All I can say is, I hope the government don't neglect the orangutans and other animals that live there. For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now.